Hi, I'm Kip Kolsinskis, Land Use and Conservation Specialist. The University of Connecticut Extension, with funding from the USDA National Institute of Food and Agriculture, have created a collection of information and tools to assist farmers and land managers to be successful by minimizing the risk, protecting their communities and natural resources, while being economically viable. In this video, we'll show you how to use the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service's Web Soil Survey online web tool. It can be used to identify areas of different soils, discover their properties, and review interpretations about their suitabilities for different uses. We will use this incredible natural resource database, which was completed by soil scientists with field investigations, to help you identify some of the soil's information that will help you in determining the suitability of soils for agriculture and farm infrastructure and identifying features that are often required in the applications for state and federal programs. Typically, you'll need to identify the soils and the status and acreage of different land covers, such as the amount of open farmland, pasture land, hayland, cropland, and farmstead areas. In addition, to get an easy to understand overview of the suitability of the soils for agriculture and forestry, we will identify the land capability class and subclass. The information you will obtain, including maps and tables, can be downloaded and saved or shared. The information is free. Let's get started. So first I'm showing you uh, a, my browser, which I'm using Google, and just um, typing in Web Soil Survey, and you can see that it comes right up at the top of the list. So I think that's the easiest place to find it. So let's click on that, and we're going to the front page of the Web Soil Survey. So I always recommend that folks read the basic instructions offered here before they get started on the site. It's also important to note that there are links to help the user find the closest USDA Service Center, as well as the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service State Soil Scientist for the state you're working in. There are soil scientists and conservationists that can help you use the web soil survey should you have trouble getting the information that you need. There is soils information for about 95% of all private lands in the U.S. You can see I have an arrow pointed to the contact us link to USDA and um, that can also take you to the NRCS state soil scientist on the various state NRCS home pages. So we're going to click on the Start Web Soil Survey button to open the Web Soil Survey. You'll notice that there's a lot of different tabs across the top and the sides that are going to help you access the information. So first, let's find your property. There's several ways to do this. So first, you're going to find the Area of Interest or AOI tab. And we're going to use the first the state and county to help us kind of define the area that we're going to be looking for soils information. So we're going to choose Connecticut as a state and Tolland as the county. So you can see here we're showing a little bit more detail. It's showing roads, it's showing streams, and what you're going to use is the zoom feature. You can see the little magnifying glass with the plus to be able to narrow down the area in which your property is that you're looking for soils information for. Way that I really like to find the area that I'm looking for soils information for is to use the address feature. So you can see on the left the address feature a little box opened up and what I would do would be to just type in the address or as close to an address that you know of for the property that you're interested in. So we've, we've typed in 68 Hyde Ave, Vernon, Connecticut, and the search feature has found us uh, the area that I'm interested in. You can see the large green field in the center there, and um, that's where we're going to try to get some information on the acreage and soils and land capability class. So let's go to our next slide here. You can see I'm using the pan feature, that little hand, to move it to the center of the screen. I think that's much easier to delineate an area when you have the image in the center of the screen. 
And so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to delineate the outline of the field. So there's two boxes there that are AOI, area of interest. There's one which is a rectangular box, which just gives you a rectangle around the area. You could use that. Or if you really want to calculate the acreage of a, a, a field or a piece of woodland or a farmstead area, you're going to be able to outline the edges in an irregular kind of shape boundary with this one that looks like a kind of an oddly shaped polygon. And you can see I have a blue arrow that is showing that delineation. So we're going to click on that and we are going around the edge of the field with our mouse and we're clicking along the edge so you see a little a little uh, X will form and that will be a dot and basically you're doing a connect the dots to form a line and then when you get back to the beginning where, where you've started you are completing the polygon and it will be able to give you an acreage calculation so we've outlined the field you can see with a and it shows up as a red line see where the blue arrow is and that's going to give me a calculation for the area that we're interested in so here it's showing it's cross hatched if you look in the AOI information on the left it's showing 15.4 acres so it's a very effective way for calculating acreage unfortunately there's not an easy way to store that information so I would say you know have a sheet of paper and write down those features. Um, if you make a mistake, you can always hit escape on your computer and start over. Um, you know, it, that does, does happen, so there is a way to, to start over. And that's how you would calculate acreages for different land uses. I think it's a, a very useful function. So now that we've done that, and if you're satisfied with the area that we've outlined, let's get a soil map. So you can see on the top left there we have a tab which says soil map and I have a blue arrow next to it so if you click on that then you're going to get a soil map. So you can see what it does is that it's identified within that area or AOI the different soil polygons. So a soil polygon is area of soil or soils that are dominantly in that area that have unique physical and chemical properties for different uses. And you can see on the left, it's also showing us a map unit legend. So the map unit legend has a symbol that relates to what's shown on the map. And the soil name, the name like Sudbury is where that soil was first identified. Sandy loam is the surface. Zero to five percent slopes is the slope or angle of inclination of the land the approximate acres that are within that boundary and what percentage of the whole area that is. So that way you can get an acreage of the different soils that you might need for a report. So then you're probably wondering, well Kip, I'd like a little bit more information about the legend. What, what do those various symbols mean? So if we go to the next slide, if you click on the legend, which is that yellow tab on the left, it will show you what all the different features are that are on the map and of course there are definitions available for all of those. So we have our soil map, we have our legend, but let's get a little bit more information about the, about the soils. So by clicking on the name Sudbury Sandy Loam 0 to 5% slope, we have brought up a brief map unit description. So it gives some basic information about the physical and chemical properties of the soils. And of course, within the web soil survey, there's a lot of information for every layer of the soil. There's physical and chemical properties. But this is just a general overview, which is uh, basically all we want right now. So you can see some information about Sudbury soils. So you might want to create a printable version of that. So you can see above the map there it says printable version and you can put in a title or a subtitle to it. You know, Gunther Farm is what we've put in there. And you can print it, you can save it, and you can also add it to a shopping cart for printing out later or downloading later. So you can see now we're got our soil map 
and we would like to get more information about the land classification. So here is where you would find, you can see on the top, Soil Data Explorer. That gives you a lot of information about interpretations and properties of different soils. And so we're specifically interested in, in land capability class. So you can see on the top, Soil Data Explorer. I've got an arrow there. On the left, Soil Classification. And under Soil Classifications, as you scroll down, you will see uh, Capability Classes. And there's both irrigated and unirrigated capability class. So we're most interested in the unirrigated capability class. So what I really like about land capability class is that I think that it's a really easy way to understand the capabilities of the soil for agriculture, forestry, wildlife habitat. It's a, a system of identifying and categorizing the soils, one through eight, one being the best soils with the fewest limitations for agriculture, eight being the most limitations. So that's what we're going to try to do. So you can see, you can either view the description or view the rating where you want to view the rating. So we're going to click on the view rating and you can see we've come up with a color-coded map and the color-coded map and then the rating and the acreage and the percent again. So again, if we look at, uh, we were looking before a Sudbury soil, 23A. So that's a land capability class of two, one being the best. So two is pretty darn good. So we've got a lot of two, and you can see the Agawam is also two, and then Walpole is four. So the next question is, well, uh, what are those? I can look on the map, but it would be nice to be able to also look at the color coding and, and identify it by that and create a map of the color coding of land capability class. So in this next slide you can see by again clicking on the legend it's showing me the color coding as relates to the map that's in front of you. And I think that's very useful and you can also print that or save that as well. So if you want a little bit more information again you can see the description underneath Class two soils have moderate limitations that reduce the choice of plants or that require moderate conservation practices. So we have a better understanding of that it has some limitations, the Sudbury soil, but you might want to say, well, what's, what is the limitation? I'd like more information. And that comes from the land capability subclass. So that's the next thing that we're, we're going to key in on, going back over to the legend on the left and clicking on non-irrigated capability subclass. So that gives you information about what the rating is and what those limitations are. So you can see Sudbury Sandy Loam, 0 to 5% slopes, and the subclass rating is W. So as you might expect, W stands for wetness. So these are soils that are moderately well-drained. They have a seasonal high water table of 18 to 24 inches. Uh, early and late in the year. So if it's a wet spring or a wet fall, it could have a little bit of a wetness limitation. So that's basically one of those things that's keeping that soil from uh, being rated uh, capability class one. So it is showing us that it does have some limitations. Still a very good soil. So you can see the blue arrow there is the information about that subclass. So again, you can save that information, you can print it, and you can add it to the shopping cart. The shopping cart, basically all of the different kind of features that through the Soil Data Explorer that you may have looked at, you can save and then download into a final soil survey report. So again, uh, we're going to save that. So we put it into the shopping cart and then the next thing is that, as I mentioned, the shopping cart is a really good feature for downloading. You can download it just at the time that you're um, using it, or you can download it later. You can send it to someone, but basically it gives you information about how soil surveys are made, that um, description, basic soils description of the map unit, so you have a better understanding of those features 
And then if you were interested in the land capability class, the prime farmland status, depth of water table, all those different features will end up being in the final report um, that you've added to the shopping cart and that you can print off. So I think that's a very useful feature. As In summary, to be successful in managing the land, you need to have a basic understanding of the soil resources and their properties, limitations, and potentials for different uses. We're fortunate to have a national inventory of our soil resources that can help us make critical land use and management decisions. Many state and federal grant programs use the basic soils data from the Web Soil Survey for evaluating and ranking applications. These soil maps are also a great planning tool for crop production and conservation planning at the scale and time they were made. And though, they never should take the place of an on-site investigation with a knowledgeable professional. And there are some soil conditions that can be modified over time that may affect the classification, such as removing surface stones, drainage, or mining. Land cover can change too, so try to feel verify what you think is, has changed. If you think there are changes on the parcel that have major impacts on the soils, contact the USDA NRCS state soil scientist or a soil scientist about scheduling an on-site investigation. Thank you, and I hope you're successful in using the Web Soil Survey. Thanks again to the University of Connecticut Extension and USDA National Institute of Food and Agriculture for making this video possible.